Hi, everybody. Um, I'm seeing a couple people are still filtering in. Um, I do apologize for the clicking around when everyone was on. We thought we would get on a little bit early before everyone did, but it seems like you guys were excited to join us too. Um, just a little introduction of what we're doing. Um, we wanted to thank everybody for joining us this morning. We're expecting this to last maybe about a half hour. We understand everybody's busy. Everything's a little crazy, everyone working remotely. Um, but we just wanted to touch base, let you guys know what we're up to, and I guess let's get started. So first thing we wanted to do was just give everybody an update how SSI is responding to the coronavirus. Um, right now, most of our staff, we're working remotely from home when we do have to physically be in the office or in one of the production facilities. We are working on social distancing, we're coordinating with each other to make sure there's not too many of us in the office. But for the most part, we are all working from home. Um, we've invested in some software and really work together to find a way where we can all work remotely and minimize any interruptions to you guys. Um, I just wanna thank our team. I think we're doing a really good job, not physically being together in the office, but we're still staying connected, getting everything done. And I think our response to our customers has been just as good as if we were in the office. Um, we also just wanted to let you know, I know I've had a few customers ask me this as well. Right now, our production facilities are fully up and running. We have not had any delays yet at the moment. Of course, if anything changes or you have an order in house where we anticipate a delay, we'll let you know as soon as we know. But for now, everything is moving according to plan. Um, just being completely transparent, we have seen some shipping delays, some problems, sometimes some delays booking trucks or ocean freight shipments here and there. So we did just want to let you guys know what we're seeing. So if you do have a critical order, it's probably better to look at it now versus later. Um, just so you guys know, I'm Doreen running the meeting and I also have Rosalvi joining me. She's going to be working on some of the later slides. Um, we also have Tom Frankel here as a panelist. He's going to be helping us man the chat box. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, we're going to do que more questions at the end too. Then we'll utilize the raise a hand feature so you guys can actually speak if you don't want to use the chat box. Um, of course, if you have any questions too, feel free to email us and we will get back to you. We did want to let you guys know if you needed to reach out to us, um, our phone lines are working so you can call the normal office line and numbers. All the calls are forwarding to our cell phones. You can reach us by email, Skype, WhatsApp, um, basically the same ways you would reach us normally, we're here for you. So I guess let's get started. Um, what we're here to talk about today, what's new, what's going on. We wanted to share some things we've launched that are either currently in production or they're in development close to launch. Um, we are a little disappointed. We've had to cancel some trips. We've had some trade shows canceled. Um, and we really look forward to those times where we get to meet you guys in person, show you what we're doing, share what's going on. So we thought this would be a good way to connect and give you guys an update what we're up to and you can see what's new, what's coming out and we're just one, you know, those of you who are familiar with us, you know, innovations at our core, our goal is to always be improving. We want to provide you with a system that runs efficiently, requires less maintenance versus anything you can get anywhere else. Um, one thing that I really love about SSI is we never fall into a comfort zone, you know, just because we came out with something new, we're always looking to improve. And the reason why we do that, it's you, it's our customer. We, we always want to give you what's best, what's new, what, whether it's a better price point, whether it's a longer membrane life, whether it's making insulation easier. Our main focus and what drives us to do the research and the development and the new product launches that we do, it's you guys. And we just wanted to thank you. Um, some of you are probably already familiar with, but we did want to share with you a little bit about our EC series diffusers. Um, these have been in production and they're currently in stock worldwide. Um, they're a great choice for projects where capital costs might be a concern. Um, we have a number of installations already. So if any of you guys are interested, we can give you a reference list. You can talk to some people who are already currently using them. 
we can provide you guys with a quote. Again, just reach out to us, whether in the chat box or by email afterwards, and we would love to put something together for you. Um, we're just gonna go a little bit into what is the EC series and what makes it different. Um, the EC series, their diffusers that they're made a single mold, one piece and the membrane is molded into the diffuser and there's no additional assembly required. They're a sustainable product made with recycled materials, lighter, and they're also more economic when compared to our regular AFD diffusers. Um, just to run down, again, it's something that if you guys have worked with us for a while, you might be familiar with. We had the older ECD series diffusers. Those were also made with recycled material, but similar to our AFD diffusers, they had a two-piece body, the base and the ring, and then they had the membrane that screwed into them. Those were a lower cost because of the recycled plastic than the traditional AFD, but this new single mold EC series is a lower cost because we've eliminated those two pieces and now it's all one. Um, EC diffusers come standard with a regular EPDM membrane. It's the same membrane that you're gonna get if you bought an AFD diffuser. Um, we do have for the EC series diffusers, you can get our different membrane materials. So if you have an application where you wanna use PTFE, that's definitely available. We keep that in stock. We also have silicone. Um, so you have all the same options and that membrane that's in the EC series diffuser is the same membrane that you would get if you bought the AFD diffuser. <clears throat> the EC diffusers, they're also available in both disc and tube options. For the disc versions, we have them available in a seven inch, a nine inch and a 12 inch, as well as a larger 20 inch style donut diffuser. Um, the disc diffusers, they come with a three quarter inch nipple connection and they can be installed using one of our grommets or you can use a threaded connection on the pipe. We also have, which Rosalvi is gonna to touch on a little bit in some of the later slides, a quick threaded saddle, which easily clamps on the pipe and you can use that to install the EC discs as well. Um, just one thing to note, if you currently have an SSI installation with quick connect saddles, the EC diffusers are not compatible with the quick connect saddle because the bottom of the EC diffuser is different than the AFD diffuser. So that's just one thing we wanted to share with you to keep in mind. Um, Next, we're gonna to touch a little bit on the tube diffusers. Um, SSI's ECT tube diffuser was designed to provide low pressure loss, high oxygen transfer, and have an ease of installation. Compared to traditional tube diffusers, the ECT diffusers require about 75% less labor, which allows us to offer a more competitive price. Um, just a little bit about what makes them different than a regular tube diffuser. A regular tube diffuser, you have the body and then the membrane, which is held on using two stainless steel clamps. Similar to the, A or similar to the EC diffusers, the ECT tube diffusers, they have the membrane already molded into the body. So again, it's one piece, less labor, and we're able to pass those savings on to you. Um, the ECT tube diffusers, there's two different ways to connect them to your piping system. You can either use a nipple connection, or we also have a saddle connection, which there's an image of there in the corner on the bottom. Um, both are easy to use. You can, you know, retrofit these on existing systems, depending on hole sizes. And again, we have these in stock in our warehouses worldwide, so we're ready to ship. Um, and that's the EC series diffusers. Um, we've also, we're very excited. We now have up and running our in-house media production. Um, over the past few years, we've expanded our process division and we've brought in a couple of colleagues who have expansive MBBR knowledge. I know a couple of them are on the chat as well. So feel free to reach out and say hi. Um, we've worked with our team. We've created our own media to optimize performance when paired with our fine bubble diffusers. One thing that we do differently is our competitors generally pair MBBR with coarse bubble diffusers, but here at SSI, we like to utilize fine bubble aeration because we found that op that optimizes both volume metrics and energy efficiency. Um, our media, it can be sold on its own, or one thing that our team does well is we're able to combine it with a full process solution, and that's engineered start to finish from our experts. Um, if you guys are interested in learning more about MBBR and our process division, one of our next webinars coming up is going to be on MBBR. 
We're aiming to launch it in the next few weeks. We don't have a date confirmed yet, but watch your email because we will send out an email blast and let you guys know the schedule for that one. Um, you might be wondering what makes our media different? What made us decide to invest in our own tooling to make our own media? Um, our process team, they have a lot of experience, I think about 20 years in the MBBR field. So based on their experience, they carefully crafted media to design, maximize benefits and set it apart from what's currently on the market. For our media, we only use high quality virgin HDP with UV inhibitors. Um, our media was designed to have superior wall thickness and we found that the superior wall thickness makes the chips more resilient over time and based on our projections we're expecting them to last about 10 to 20 years in applications. Um, our media also was designed to have a high specific gravity because we found that that reduces the airflow from mixing and that makes our media pair well with the fine bubble aeration that we like to use. Um, we also, our media has optimal geometry and effective surface area, which we found promotes healthy biological growth on the media. And now my colleague Rosalvi is going to take over and tell you a little bit about our PVC fittings and some of the other things that we have in the works coming soon. Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody's doing well. So as Irene mentioned earlier, at SSI, we are known for innovation, and that is why we have created our own PVC fittings. Um, a successful installation, it doesn't stop just at the diffusers. That's why we offer a variety of different accessories for our aeration system, ranging from our diffuser mounts to our systems, and they are designed to keep your aeration system running at a peak efficiency. We do this by maintaining our integrity of the wastewater treatment facilities all around the world. And we do this because we want you to have a system, um, having a system that you can depend on, we know is critically important. Whether it's our products or systems or our accessories, we have always make sure that we have an industry uh, with quality control. As I mentioned earlier, we manufacture our own PVC, our CPVC and PP and stainless steel fittings to ensure the highest quality while we keep our cost competitive. Now let's see about the end caps. Not sure if you're familiar, but only about 25% of specs, they call for removable end caps, but they can be an advantage if you have a breach in the piping system requiring a pipe cleaning, which make it easier for cleaning. The cost of the removable end cap from the market is about three times the cost of a fixed end cap. And we manufacture our own in-house and we can produce and ship the parts at a lower price than even before. We have this available in different metric sizes um, such as 110 and 90 uh, millimeter. We also, for our branches, uh, we also have, uh, for third party suppliers, they usually make the manifolds to lateral branches by fabrication and they're especially costly for manifolds. Um, even when you think about the sizes, uh, 10 inches and up, and even eight inches in smaller sizes are six times more expensive than SSI branches. And at SSI, our branches, we, I'm so sorry, um, our, give me one moment because our presentation is moving. I apologize for them. As I was as I was saying, uh, the reason why our branches are um, competitive is because they're easy to handle by one person. And as long as the hole in the pipe is center, the branch of, and the branch fits it right, and it registers in its place, there's plenty of contact area to seal and make up a glue around the feeding for a robust and leak proof connection. Again, we have these available in different US and metric sizes. Now let's talk about our unions. Before we used to buy our unions from third party suppliers. However, we decided to make an, our own because they can be stacked and packed with clearance. They avoid damage in transit 
even though the, uh, the O-rings, they're robust with reinforcing ribs, so that they can be easily tight tightened in the field without breaking. We have our triangular splines on both sides, which compares to competitors' products having square splines, which may be harder to lock or provide inferior anti-rotation properties. Our unions, they can be easily glued by one person and pushed onto the piping by one hand. So there is no need for a press as some of the other competitors. These are also available in US and metric sizes. And now I will be moving into our thread asado, which Dari mentioned earlier. Our SSI disc diffusers are designed to work together, which the, the reason why we did this is because this avoid problems or, or of finding local parts with different threads, threads or taper. We have added a four inch saddle and modified the design of our all three inch saddle. And this is to provide additional strength at the threadle connection saddle. Our three inch saddle can be used on imperial or metric pipe, depending on the O-ring used for installation. Also, our quick thread saddles offer a robust, easy to install connection method, which is compatible with multiple diffuser options. Not sure if all of you were familiar, but if you were not familiar, some we have made some changes to our estimated software. We have been working on and develop a new version, which we are excited to share with you. For those not familiar with our estimating software, we have developed a program which allow you to quickly and independently prepare proposal with budgetary pricing and single line drawings. And this is really good for you because when you need an answer from us quick, you don't have the time to wait or email us uh, for a full engineering proposal from our team. You can easily go in here and um, do your design. For our users, you might be wondering what, make, what makes this different. The re, uh, one of the things that makes it different is that we now feature more in detail on the design sheet output. The software allows more design options and scenarios to better fit your site and give you a more accurate number. You can also now compare multiple diffuser options easily on one page. And the software also can calculate and output both disc and tube diffuser options in circular and rectangular layouts. Also, proposal and curves can be downloaded together, downloading together. Before it, it was different, you had to you had different options, but now we're trying to make everything user friendly to, to our customer. For you that were not familiar that we had this, at the end of the webinar, we will be sending an email with some information on how to use it, where is it located in our website. And if you need instructions on how to use it, we're here. Uh, we will be sending an email on that as well. Also, this is just to make it easier for you, but that doesn't mean that you cannot contact us. You can contact us to ask us any questions about it, and we will be here to answer you. As I mentioned, we're available um, in our phone, in our email. So this is just to help you um, get um, faster proposal to your clients. We have also come to design a package plan design software, which the package plan design software works for plants up to 1000 meters cube per flow rate. You will be able to select your own average flow rate, um, your peak flow rate, effluent water characteristics, effluent requirements and currency, and it will determine which of SSI's package plan products is right for you at that moment and how many you need. It will also provide a price technical proposal by email within 60 seconds of submitting a request. If you're interested in accessing to the software, you can definitely let us know and we will be covering more of this information of our design software in our next uh, webinar, which will be MBBR. These are some of the webinars that are coming soon. As I mentioned um, earlier, our MBBR webinar will be 
uh, coming by the end of this month and we will be sending out an email to you with all the details and at the end of this webinar as well you are able to ask us any questions we will be also providing a uh, frequently asked questions for MBBR that way you're ready uh, for when you come to the webinar and definitely feel free to email us if you have any questions about this webinar or the upcoming MBBR webinar that way we can cover those questions that you have. We will be also doing a launch and learn style webinar for our training uh, training with our US reps. It will be a one-on-one and then for some will be a group webinar and this series of webinar, they will also be translated into Spanish editions and we will be letting you know when this will be launching. And if you're interested, uh, we can definitely, we'll be sending an email to everybody that attended to this webinar and you can let us know if you want to be part of the Spanish one as well. Uh, we're here to, to, to help you with that. We have come to the end of our update on what's happening at SSI right now and what we are working on and our new products. Uh, this was more like a introduction to our new series of webinar. We will definitely be doing more of these. And if you have any suggestions, if you have any questions, or if, this, if there's anything specific that you would like to see in a training, you can definitely let us know because we're here and we started doing this webinar for you to make things um, easier for you, to train you and also wanted to mention that if you're interested in um, getting marketing materials such as pictures for your um, marketing products, your website, we'll be creating a link, uh, a Dropbox link um, to provide you with those pictures as well. So anything that you need, please reach out to us. Our email is on the screen. And you have, if you have a contact, direct contact, one of the US managers, feel free to email us. Thank you so much, and you can definitely ask any questions that you have at this moment. Rosalvi, thank you for that, and thanks, Doreen. This is Tom, um, Tom Frankel. Uh, I'd like to also thank everybody for attending today. Uh, we're just testing out this uh, concept of doing webinars. Um, for the first time, really, and we really appreciate all the uh, all of your attention. Um, I think we'll get a little more technical and a little more detailed as we go along in the subsequent webinars. Also, we've had a few questions to the panelists about links to uh, the Aeration Design software. Uh, in the thank you for attending uh, email that'll go out after this uh, after this is over, I think you'll get a link to uh, to be able to. Uh, watch this again if you so choose, but it will also include links to sign up for the new Aeration Design Software uh, customer site. We also have some other software coming up. We have uh, uh, MBBR package plan uh, a tool, which, uh, will, uh, which you'll be able to use shortly. And uh, we also have uh, an ERP uh, customer portal. So you'll be able to get into our our own ER, our SSI ERP and check inventory and uh, generate your own uh, price quotes if you so choose. All that's coming shortly and will be detailed in a uh, future webinar. Thank you again. Okay. Um Again, like Tom said, thank you everyone for coming out. Um, you know, thank you for your patience. This is like Tom said, this is a new thing for us. Um, you know, we're just learning. We're definitely open. We're going to be doing a lot more webinars. So if there's any particular topic that you guys are interested in or would like us to do a webinar on, definitely feel free to reach out, give us your suggestions um, because we would love to hear what you guys would be interested in too and what you think would benefit you the most. Um, I see a lot of questions are coming in right now in the chat. There also is the raise your hand feature on Zoom meetings. So if you want to ask a question, we actually have um, Manuel right now is raising his hand. So I'm going to, if you use the raise your hand feature, you can actually speak versus use the chat. So. We can use that as well if you want to verbally ask the questions. Otherwise, there's a lot of us in the chat too answering questions. So I guess we're going to go to the questions now and we'll 
hopefully get everything answered for you guys. Manuel, you can go ahead and ask your question if you're able. Oh, I believe you're muted already. Doreen, are you able to, I am trying to, um, I believe he has been unmuted to ask the question. Yeah, he has. I don't know. I do see he said in the chat, thank you. So I think that was, I don't know if he has any further questions. Okay. Um, I see that we have a question from Mohammed, how high could you provide how to register to design or paper quotation by ourselves? Yes, we'll be providing um, those details. I see that Kelsey also answered that question. And just further to what Rosalvi just said, we are planning on doing webinars to walk you guys through the new software as well. So we'll do a little more detailed program on those. Um, within the next couple weeks too. Again, we'll send out an email blast so you guys can put that on your schedule. Um, all of our webinars are recorded. So I believe it probably takes a couple hours for the software to process the recording once we're done. Um, but we will have the past webinars available for you to watch later for reference. Um, and we'll send out, we're gonna send out a thank you email to everyone that joined us today. So we'll include that link in that video in there as well. Okay, I believe we don't have any more questions coming in. Um, I just saw Mike Mealy is asking a question or he raised his hand. So I just, if you want to, I unmuted you if you want to ask okay. here or if you want to use the chat. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Um, <clears throat> can you send us samples of the EC diffusers? Yes, we definitely can. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Thank okay. you for coming. Yes. Does anybody have any more questions that would like to ask? Okay, I believe there's Kelsey has answered the latest question as well. First of all, hang on one second. I have one more uh, question I'm answering here. I've just got to get a link. Okay. slow. 
you can also feel free to um, put the questions here and also if you come up with any questions even after the webinar feel free to send it to us via email Rosalvi, would you send, uh, I don't know if you can see this one, Brendan Kelly, maybe it'd be easier just to send it to him. He needs uh, data sheets on our membranes and um, a link on the website and also the um, uh, membrane uh, physical properties test report. Okay. My internet is too slow at home right now. Okay, I think we'll, we also should get a transcript, transcript of the chat so we can go through and just make sure we got everybody too afterwards. We'll just double check. Yes, I see that. Uh, would you send us more information about the feedings? Yes, we will be sending more information about that. I see a question from Ivan. Can yes, we'll be sending the email uh, with presentation and the information um, that we covered today. Hello, this is Osman. Hey. Uh, I would like to learn uh, about the investments in in US. Uh, is it going on, or any cancellations, or hold hold something like that about wastewater treatments, or something like that? Um, I would say generally we still see things moving for the most part. Um. I, Tom Devine probably would be able to chime in better, but we're still shipping our production facility here is still busy. We still have customers asking for orders. So we haven't seen really much of a slowdown in terms of our business. Um, I know a lot of other industries have obviously been affected by what's going on, but wastewater still is moving. So. Okay. Actually, in Turkey, it's a little bit getting slower, and some of the uh, projects has been postponed or hold due to this crisis, and we don't know how will it end. Or do you have any idea <laughs> about it? I don't know in USA. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely. I think there's probably some holdups, like things that are bidding and offices and people working remotely. Um, I mean, I mean, from more of an insulation standpoint, things that have already been purchased and are in production, um, we haven't seen a slowdown. But I don't know in Turkey, is there any projected date when things are going to be better or you still in the, just the day by day? Yeah, still the, uh, the outbreak is increasing in, in Turkey, so we don't know how it's going to end but a few months we will be affected by this this case, I guess. Yeah, I think I think for our, there's, it seems like we might be peaking here in New York, but it's, again, it changes every day. So I don't think any of us really know when things will be normal per se. We're finding a lot of consulting engineers are still working on new projects. Um, in uh, also in parts of Europe, uh, the same we see the same thing. In Italy, Spain are still very active. Um, 
Yeah, yeah, still it's the same in Turkey. There are some projects keep going on, but the problem is again uh, the currency. Uh, the uh, the euro and currency is raising uh, dramatically. So uh, all of the investments being held by Turkish lira, but uh, this pro uh, this currency increase, this is really really affecting the projects going on. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. I mean, listen, I think that uh, most companies are experiencing uh, uh, sales declines and um, less activities, uh, less commercial activity, uh, less orders. Uh, you know, we're, we're definitely expecting some of that, but it's not like the restaurant business. We're not, this is not the end of the world for our industry. Yeah. Um, yeah and right. also, a lot of times, I don't know how it is in Turkey, but in the U.S., after an economic recession or depression, the government will pour a lot of money in, into infrastructure to try to kickstart the economy again. So I think after this is over, a lot of government spending will happen um, for uh, wastewater uh, treatment, new wastewater plants and upgrades and things like this. Same thing happened in 2009. Uh, they will, they will try it, but. Uh probably a few months later because at the moment this uh, the, the dollar currency today 1.5% uh, increased in Turkey so can you imagine in one month it's more than 10 to 15% uh, increase so this is a, a lot of money and then uh, most of the investments now they are stopping or they are waiting the, the, the currency rate comes to a level stabilize or something like that so uh, I think uh, we can again see uh, a, some improvements after a few months, I guess. Yeah, I hope so. We see we see this also in other in other places. The Russian ruble um, uh, after the oil prices uh, changed, yeah, yeah. the price of oil changed. The, the ruble dropped a lot. We have a lot of activities in um, India. Uh, and the Indian rupee also has been dropping. Um, so yeah, and the can even the Canadian dollar um, hasn't hasn't held up as well. So mm. yeah, we have projects where we've already supplied the materials based on uh, earlier exchange rates where we sold in the local currencies. So that's another hit really, and because the dollar has has kept uh, kept its value. And so, um, but anyway. What can we do? Like I said, uh, our our company is financially strong. Our industry is a good one to be in, relatively. So uh, we can, I think we we have something to look forward to at the end of this. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Osman. Great. Do we have any more questions? Again, if there's anything you think of later, definitely feel free to drop us an email. But Doreen, we do have two questions here. One is from Greg. He asked, will future webinars include discussion about telemetry? Um, Tom, I'm not sure if you can answer that one for him. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, 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 we did work on, um, on a much more sophisticated uh, uh, instrumentation, uh, submerged instrumentation a few years ago. And um, we sort of came to the conclusion that the best approach was to keep all the electronics out of the tank. And so there are certain things we can measure remotely. One of them is pressure. Um, another one is temperature. And so we changed our focus to digital pressure monitoring systems from um, sort of a more sophisticated uh, system. And uh, those actually have been working pretty well. We've got some nice feedback from the first few users. So it is a product that we're looking to, um, to distribute more of and manufacture more of. Uh, but with all the other things that we've been developing with MBBR Media and the, and the rollout of the EC product line and all these um, new customer portals for aeration design, MBBR design, and, um, um, and uh, ERP access warehouse, uh, quotes, historical uh, data for account data. 
you know, it's just, it's just so much time in the day. So yeah, we'll definitely get around to it. Um, but uh, it's, it'll, it'll have to, it'll have to wait a little while. Um, Tom, one more question uh, from Oscar. He asked, do we have saddles, which is in black plastic? I know that we do provide some of the ECT saddles in black plastic. Um, would you like to speak about that briefly? So, sorry, Kelsey. The, the question is, do we have uh, ECT saddles? What, what, I, you... He asked, do we have saddles, which is black plastic, black plastic referring to the recycled. Um, I believe we do not provide any saddles other than that for the ECT that are in the recycled plastic, but I wasn't sure if you wanted to. I mean, the saddle, no, we don't, we don't, we're not currently making any saddles uh, for like, uh, the, the QTS threaded saddles for disc diffusers, we're not making those out of recycled material uh, presently. Um, you know, it's, it, it's we, we, we need a, a ductile material for that uh, purpose. And, uh, you know, there are certain products which are, uh, certain things should be rigid, like pipe should be rigid and not, uh, not so ductile. But uh, a saddle that has to fit around a, a, a range of pipe uh, outside diameters um, should should be able to adapt to to that to, to each situation, a range of temperatures and a range of uh, diameters. So that's not a great product to be making that uh, in a in a rigid way. Um, you know, a diffuser body itself, it's good to make it uh, relatively rigid um, as well. But the the adapter, the connector between the pipe and the diffuser usually should have some ductility to it. And it's hard to do that with recycled in a, in a, in a consistent way with recycled materials because you don't really know what exactly what you're getting with each shipment. I see we have another question on the chat um, regarding MBBR. I don't know if one of you guys want to just answer that in the chat. And, yeah, I just answered that. Um, okay. I believe you were talking about the question regarding tertiary filtration. Um, the question was when comparing MBR, which is a membrane bioreactor, to MBBR, is SSI able to provide a tertiary filter uh, with MBBR to be able to achieve the same effluent results as that of a membrane, membrane bioreactor MBR? And the answer to that question is yes. We are able to provide a tertiary filtration system to be able to meet more stringent effluent objectives, similar to that of a membrane bioreactor. In fact, we find that when pairing an MBBR with tertiary filtration, you are able to achieve the same, if not better results than that of an MBR, but with less energy consumption and with more simple operation. Um, if you have a client who would like to uh, have both of these solutions, the MBBR and the tertiary filtration system, SSI is able to design this holistically together. Um, the filter itself will be specifically selected based off the type of wastewater, the objectives that need to be achieved, and also um, specific to the site. Uh, how much room is there available? How much space can we do for MBBR, et cetera? There's so many different variables that go into the design, and that's why our process design team here at SSI uh, engineers everything holistically. So if you're interested in that, please reach out to us and let us know. Okay, we have one more question here for MBBR. It is, what is the pre-treatment required for an MBBR properly operation? 
Um, this again is very dependent on the specific project that you are looking at. If you're looking at an industrial application, what type of wastewater is that? Are we looking at a dairy or a slaughterhouse or a textile plant? Are we looking at typical domestic sewage? That's really gonna come into play, especially with pretreatment because uh, as you would assume, every type of water is going to have different constituents, different types of solids. They might have more fats, oils, and greases. Um, Typically, what we like to see to optimize the performance of the MBBR system is two millimeter pre-screening or primary screening. Um, if it is a system which has high fats, oils, and greases, we like to put a DAP upstream of the MBBR. That way, those fats, oils, and greases do not bind to the MBBR media themselves, affecting the performance of it. So we like to try to keep the fats, oils, and greases below 30 ppm before going into an MBBR. Um, other than that, there's other pre-treatment that may be required if you have a high strength industrial application or an application with lots of solids. So if that is the case, feel free to reach out to us and we can evaluate your specific project and let you know our recommendations. All right, do we have any other questions? Um, I know there's still a few people going back and forth in the chat. Um, let me see. Yeah, I don't see any more coming up right now. Just a quick reminder that if there are any more questions about MBBR, we will be having an upcoming MBBR webinar where we will dive into more detail, the specifics about the media that we currently manufacture, the solutions that we can provide, and different design um, considerations that go into play when designing an MBBR system. All right, well, I guess if we don't have any more questions, um, thank you for everyone coming out and joining us this morning. Um, again, this was the first of more webinars to come. Thank you to all of my colleagues who helped to answer the questions, field some of the questions, took turns presenting. Um, and we will we'll be sending a follow-up email with some of the information requested and also a recap. And we hope to see you guys again soon. <laughs>